Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Suma Mani Cafecito. I am about to invite our guest speakers, so please hold on tight. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, we are, you know, waiting for people to trickle in. And of course, we're going to be talking about NFTs and how you can create your own project. So this should be really exciting. Um, please hold on tight. We're going to be here um, for a little before we get started. And for everybody who's, uh, who's joining right now, I'm assuming you all aren't at NFT NYC. So... You have FOMO just like the rest of us. And for those who don't know what NFT NYC, it's a, a huge NFT conference that's going on in uh, in New York right now. There's like 15,000 people that flew in from all around the world just to hit up all the events and talk about NFTs. So super jealous. I think uh, I think Mel was there for a few days, but um, a few other people, I don't know if Liz was there, may have been or she might be. Um, but yeah, NFT NYC looks fun. We all got FOMO over here. Hi, Liz. I see. Sorry. Go ahead. Liz, I see that you're here. We actually had a conversation with Liz um, a couple weeks back where we taught um, people how to open their, you know, their Coinbase account or their Coinbase wallet. Um, I'm actually one second. I'm going to invite her to speak. Hi, Liz. Oh, hi. It's, it's so nice to see so many friends here. <laughs> Um, yeah, just like Ish, I'm just like here in LA, so I'm very jealous of all of those who are actually enjoying NFT New York. But yeah, I just wanted to pass and say hello. What up, Liz? You're famous. Don't forget about us uh, little people when you're uh, super famous and touring, <laughs> touring the world. You're so funny. <laughs> no, no, no. I wish. Uh, I wish I was famous so I could help more people. Uh, that's the idea, right? Yeah, for sure. And by the way, the people for the people that are listening, I hosted an event here in LA and Liz hosted an incredible session. The The session was packed the entire time for like three hours straight. Uh, I don't even know how many people she onboarded, but the the entire point was to onboard brand new people to Web3 and NFTs. Um, and she did it phenomenally. So thank you for, for holding it down, Liz. Yeah, of course. Of course, you have been doing an amazing job and we are all here trying to learn from you too, because everything that you have accomplished is just like so incredible. So it's always good to listen to you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Well, we can kick it off whenever y'all are ready. And uh, yeah, again, if anybody has questions throughout it, feel free to raise your hand. Or I don't know how the Sumo crew wants to handle questions, but yeah. Yeah. So um, if you have a question, you know, while we're talking, you can definitely raise your hand. And the way that you do that uh, here on Twitter Spaces is um, you see where you have a little heart plus plus a plus sign um there you can click and then there's one where you can actually raise your hand and if you would like to speak you know in regards to uh nfts or have a question please feel free to do so and then i'll make sure to queue up people um but yeah we can definitely get started i think um you know as a newbie i definitely want a little bit of a crash course on nfts and then we can really get into the nitty-gritty of you know how are you able to create an nft project and why nfts are important and, you know, in today's age and, you know, why we're so excited about web. Great. I think we can totally uh, get started. Um, so Ish, I know, um, you know, as many of, new, of you know, Ish Verdusco is the uh, founder of uh, PrimoBots. And um, I would like to give you, uh, you know, a chance to introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about you know the project and kind of like what got you into nfts yeah for sure so uh thank you for having me team uh it's pretty cool to see some familiar faces on the call um so primo bots is pretty simple it's a utility driven 3d nft project 
um, we kind of when we when I first had the idea of launching an NFT project, I was like, all right, well, what is everybody not doing? And at the time, you know, the the JPEG and PFP, you know, that was like the whole thing. That was a whole era that was happening. Kind of like the one that I have as my image right now, a little dead fella, a little green zombie. That was like a theme that I saw all the time. Um, and so I, I basically said, like, well, I can't really use this outside of Twitter. Wouldn't it be cool if one day, like, I'm like playing a blockchain video game or like I have a metaverse, you know, goggles on and I'm actually wearing, you know, an NFT. And so that's how we came about, like, you know, creating 3D NFTs that you could wear as like augmented reality or virtual reality in a, in a metaverse. Um, so that's kind of just like, you know, overview of the project for myself. I, I spent like the last, I think, eight years now doing mar- like tech marketing. So I worked at LinkedIn, Snapchat. Um, I feel like I've done too many things. I DJed for 10 years. That was really fun. So if anybody ever needs like, you know, music recommendations, let me know. I got you. Um, and uh, kind of joined crypto a few years ago. I wasn't super early on, um, but it was middle of last year that I kind of the I had like my light bulb moment with NFTs. And I was like, oh, crap, this is going to change everything. And I literally dropped everything I was doing, all my hobbies. I dropped DJing, I dropped um, writing, I dropped casting, I dropped everything. And I just went all in and kind of just documented my journey. Every time I would learn something, I would just share it online um, and kind of grew a following that way. Just like, you know, learning in public um, and screwing up in public and and like teaching people the lessons that I learned so that other people didn't do the same thing. Um, So that's kind of an overview of, you know, me. I'm, I'm in L.A., um, I'm actually getting married in two weeks too, which is kind of crazy. Getting married in Mexico, which is crazy and exciting. Uh, hey, congrats! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So yeah, I'm happy to answer questions on on anything. Uh, you know, obviously we're here for NFTs and um, what it takes. So I'm, I'm willing to be super blunt, super real with you all. I'll keep it keep it 100 so that you know I, don't, I wouldn't sugarcoat anything for sure. Great, thank you. And then we also have um, a couple of other uh, Suma team members. Um, if you would like to introduce yourself, you know. Um, we're all like really like family here. So definitely a little bit about you would be really great. Hi everyone. I'm Gabriel Torreyes. I am the head of creative of Suma. I'm very excited in this conversation to, to be in this conversation, especially because for, for the Suma uh, as a brand, as a philosophy that we, that we have, um, that everything is about building well juntos and, and, and becoming a community, a web three community to bring prosperity and wealth to, to Latinos in the United States and globally, uh, the whole point of trying to learn about NFTs is, is two things. No? But for, uh, thing number one is like, yes, we, the NFT is like everything is talking about, is, is, is out there. If you don't understand what it is, you want to understand what it is. But in the, in the core of that is how this can become into a tool for Latinos to actually start building wealth somehow. So when I was listening to you, Ish, um, you were telling your story about how you have this light bulb moment that had you dropping anything else and dedicated 100% into this. I'm just curious, and I think, I'm pretty sure that, that your story could be inspiring for anyone that is listening to this conversation, anyone that, that can join us. Uh, what was that light bulb moment? How this 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 NFT thing could be also a tool for us Latinos to actually start building well and, and achieving it in, in, rather than just thinking about it. For sure. You guys want me to answer that right now? I can, I can take it quickly. Yeah, 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 of course. That's, that's okay. the whole point. This is like, it's not like, in a, like, like a super order. Yeah. We have it's like just <laughs> moving around. <laughs> cool. No, I love it. I love it. Okay, so the light bulb moment for me, and to kind of give you guys some more context on my background, um, I had an, an event startup, I think back in like, I don't know, maybe like six years ago with one of my best friends in San Francisco. And the whole thing that we did was basically rent out nightclubs and host diverse events where we played like reggaeton, Afro beats. We got vendors to come in and, and do like, you know, jerk chicken and like different Latin dishes. Um, and so basically when I, when I had my light bulb moment with NFTs, I was like, whoa, this is a combination of everything that I've done in my entire life. You have the event aspect where you have like token gated access to things, which could be like a member to an event. You have artwork with my entire life. I loved I was like fascinated with Banksy and different street artists. So there's that, that aspect of it. And then the collectability aspect of it too, where like, you know, the young ish, 10 year old ish was a Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh card collector, like super into, like I would go to the swamp meet and just spend all my money on like Pokemon cards and hustle people for their cards. Um, so NFT is when I realized that it's like, Oh, it's not just a JP. It's like so much more like underlying, te- underlying technology that is able to verify ownership and authenticity. And to kind of like dumb that down a little bit more and make it explain or explain it to like the average person who doesn't know much. Um, if you've ever bought in like a fake pair of shoes or a fake pair of jeans or fake 
for me, it was like Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like I would buy a fake one and then find out that I got scammed. Um, NFTs, the, the, the underlying technology of NFTs allows you to like avoid that. Or if, if you ever got into a concert and you got, you get to the front and you have a fake ticket and you didn't even know, um, NFTs can fix that problem because, uh, and we'll dig into it a ton more, but basically NFTs can fix that problem and so many other issues. Um, and so that was my light bulb moment for me. I was like, whoa, for me personally, like the three different things like events, membership, collectability, and artwork, four things, I guess, is like what I love most. And obviously the marketing and the community building and brand building aspect is really cool too. Uh, so that's just like icing on the cake. And then when, when I finally realized it, and the crazy thing is I, I created my OpenSea account um, and OpenSea is, is a platform that like 90 or 95% of most of the NFT trading activity happens on. I created it in like May of last year. And if I would have, actually like funded it with some ETH, I probably would own a lot of Ford Apes and a bunch of other, like, bunch of other NFTs. But when I created it in May, it didn't, I didn't click yet. Like I was a part of the crew that was like, oh, NFTs are a scam. It's just JPEG. Like, you know, they're, they're just like, you know, little, little images of, of pictures online. And, you know, I could just right click and save them. And I think most of the reason why I had that thought was because I was kind of a part of like the LimeWire phase growing up. And if anybody here is maybe too young to remember what LimeWire was, it basically allows you to download music online um it was like the first time in history that you could torrent and download music and so i was like oh, okay well like i mean this is not that different i guess i could just download the image and it's just mine you know and it, it took me like three months to like actually like talk to people listen to podcasts and i kept hearing it come up and like another thing too when you notice the smartest people that you know and the smartest people that you look up to are all like investing a good portion of their time and energy into like one specific field or topic which happened to be NFTs, I was like, oh, shit, there's something here for sure. I should I should at least like do my due diligence so that I don't like kick myself in the butt later on, you know, like I did with crypto. I was kind of late to crypto. And so long winded answer, but that's kind of like my NFT red pill story. <laughs> I love that you're describing it as a red pill. Um, that definitely feels like, you know, it's definitely like a whole new world, you know, uh, for people to really, you know, understand the value behind NFTs. That is not just an image, but that it will, you know, I mean, it's such a new technology, but it's def it definitely will have a big utility in the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think I, you know, what's, I don't know if any everyone here understands exactly what an NFT is. Um, so would you mind explaining, you know, for us that don't necessarily understand what it is um, in like the simplest terms possible? Yeah, yeah, of course. And there's a, there's many different ways to explain it. Uh, I'm going to try to use a simple way that, that, that people can relate to. But if it still doesn't make sense, let me know and I'll break it down a different way. Uh, so NFTs are digital assets and an asset can be another other forms of assets could be like a house, you know, a famous bank fee or Picasso painting that's worth a lot of money, but digital. And, and these are digital assets that you buy with crypto. So instead of buying with monedas or money or your credit card, you buy it with crypto. It's a different form of payment. Digital assets you buy with crypto that they live on the blockchain. And the blockchain is just like crazy word. People don't really fully understand what it is. But to break down the blockchain, it's like a the blockchain is basically like a digital journal that documents every single transaction that happens between people, between companies and people, every purchase, every for every sale is all documented. Like you can't lie on the blockchain because every single transaction is documented. So to kind of reiterate one more time, NFT is at, at its very core level. It's a digital asset that you buy with crypto that lives on the blockchain. And what makes them so special because of the blockchain is you can verify ownership. So like I said, the example of me buying a fake uh, Pokemon card, um, you can verify that I own that card and you can verify whether it's real or it's fake because it, it'll tell you what collection it came from. Um, and another example, just to kind of bring this a little bit more home here, uh, Logan Paul recently bought, uh, like a holographic Charizard that was supposedly worth like millions of dollars. And he posted it on YouTube and a lot of his subscribers were like, Hey dude, you should actually get that thing like graded and graded basically means like you get it checked out to make sure it's real. And he's like, no, nah, I paid, you know, so much money for this. I, I know it's real for sure. Like I, I took somebody with me. But he ends up flying out to, to a place to get it graded. And as soon as he gets there, the person you know from the shop, he's supposed to be the, the best person in the world that verifies whether these cards are real or not, lets him know you got the best fake in the world. But don't worry, like it's <laughs> it's not worthless. It's it's uh, it's worth $3 million to you. It's just not worth much to anybody else um, or whatever the amount of money was. And you know the NFTs and blockchain technology basically solve that problem so that we don't get scammed for fakes or we, we're less likely to get scammed for fakes if you kind of do your research and your homework um, by just looking online. So hopefully that was a little bit more helpful. 
Wow. Yeah, that must have definitely been a hard thing for him to hear about uh, the card. Um, you know, I think you you mentioned how, you know, you when you barely started to get into it, you saw how, you know, people that you personally admired were really, you know, starting to look into it. And I think a lot of the the perception that people have right now is that this is for people that have money or that can just, you know, uh, waste their money on, like you said, like apparently a JPEG. But um, what you who uh, is the audience for an NFT? You know, I think who is the perfect person to, you know, get involved in uh, this new um, world? You know, I don't really think that there's a specific person. I mean, when you look at NFT NYC and all these events, there's a lot of bros at these events, which sucks. I wish they were a lot more diverse and we had more representation from, from women in particular. Um, but I, I don't think that there's a specific audience that's like, should use them or not. I think, you know, whether you have millions of dollars in the bank or you don't have much and you're just interested in learning. Um, I have some friends who around the same time that I got into NFTs like really, really deeply. Um, some friends from high school, like they, they didn't have much money to invest. And so they kind of just wanted to like learn and they would learn alongside me. I would send them articles and blog posts. Um, and then eventually one of my friends ended up getting a Discord moderator role because they were like a part of these communities. They didn't own the NFTs, but they were just like learning. They knew the lingo, they knew the technology. They understood the macro of what was going on and the micro of like how to manage Discord and how to create one from scratch. So I think there's like different opportunities, whether you want to be a collector, you want to be a creator, you want to benefit from the opportunities that come from the technology. Um, this is going to create a lot of jobs for sure. And it already is. Um, or if you want to find a creative way to use them, like for example, events, I kind of mentioned this in briefly, but events is another really cool way of using NFTs to build a community over time and reward them because you have access to their digital wallets. So NFTs basically live in a digital wallet um, that because it's on the blockchain, everybody can see what's in that wallet and anybody can send you stuff. They can't take things, but they can send you things. Um, so yeah, in short, I, I think anybody and everybody who's interested in learning or creating or collecting or building um, should kind of just do a little bit of research because I, I think once you do some research, you're going to just like, you'll have your red pill moment and you're, you're going to like, you learn one thing and there's three other things to learn. Then there's 10 new things to learn, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I was thinking also about, because most of the critiques that the NFTs and the all this NFT movement has is uh, based on when an NFT is not functional, right? Or when, when you say all of the examples of, you know, getting like, you have a tokenized way of actually providing something to this audience that we are discussing here. So for instance, if you, you have this NFT, you, you can have a life lifetime you know membership to something to it's, it's like be part of a special club or you have a special perks or you can as the case of and, and i'm just plugging that suma here because <laughs> why not uh, we 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 want to provide a financial liter literacy and financial location to to the community based on 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 actually having like a membership token as an nft as well that can give you access to events and stuff like that so I think when it comes to assigning some functionality to NFTs where maybe you can consider that as something a little bit more serious than just an, an ape, <laughs> and, and like, like it's, it's just a trading card. It's, it's a trading card that has an, 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 a value. I think that's maybe what most people are, are missing, missing the mark when they're thinking about NFT. But I want also to invite the, some of the people that are here in the... In, in this chat, the, the Suma sister, Melanie and Mariana, because they had this conversation with you, a, 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 I think a couple of weeks ago, when they were asking you about the real cost of doing this, because as any other venture, and this is being a business venture, no matter how artistic it would be or how techy it would be, you need, this has a real cost of actually an investment on anything. And, and I would like them to expand a little more on that question that they made to you. So you can enlighten us. Cool. Hi, can you guys hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, well, more than anything, thank you for being here. Um, one of the, I think one of the things that caught my attention from our conversation when we, we were collabing for the real cost was the emotional. I was wondering if you can kind of tell me a little bit more about the emotional costs that go into creating an NFT project because I feel like that's something that we don't, we tend to talk about the monetary but there's also a lot of costs that are going through, you know, in our personal lives and how much effort we and energy we are throwing into that. So if you can please expand on that. Yeah, for sure. 
This is a good question. Um, so I think most people here have seen some documentary, maybe a Steve Jobs documentary or some, something about like a startup founder and how it's extremely difficult for them to launch a company. Um, they're kind of just like working day and night, getting things done, doing, you know, 10, 10 jobs at once. They're like the CEO, then the, the marketer, then the brand builder, head of product, et cetera. Um, it, launching an NFT is like launching a company. Um, you, we, you know, you go through legal, you're basically building a community from the ground up. You're doing so many things. And if you don't have the resources, it like takes a toll on your time, your mental health, uh, your, your just general capacity of what you can do as a human, because there's only so many hours in the day. Um, and a lot of times you're scrappy. So I, I think to answer your question, it, it took a toll for sure on me because I kind of a little bit removed from the world for four months while, while I was head down, heads down working on this. Um, I also had a, a job and, you know, my side hustles while I was doing this too, um, which I kind of had to pull back a little bit on. Um, but basically every single night for maybe four or four and a half months, uh, me, my, fo my co-founder is in India too. So he's 12 hours ahead. Uh, it's like 4 a.m. for him now. We would basically spend all night, which for him, it was like the morning, I think yeah, opposite times in the morning, um, just getting this done. And so, any free time that I had, it was working on, you know, the story, the product, giving feedback on the designs, building out the, the community, building out the marketing, the brand strategy, the partnerships. Um, and so it, it's really tough. I, I think I, as long as people can think of it as like starting a company, then it makes a lot more sense in terms of like, why is it so difficult to launch an NFT that sustains um, and it isn't just like, you know, a flop or, or a rug pull. A rug pull basically means like people like sell sell out an NFT and then they kind of leave the internet or like delete their Twitter accounts and never come back. Um, so yeah. If you know anybody who's an NFT founder, give them a hug. They've probably been through so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you definitely talk about, I think we can, you know, aside from the emotional, which is definitely really important, I think, you know, starting anything requires a lot of um, mental preparation, and then also just understanding um, how to get started. But I think a lot of people like what would you what would be your advice um, for someone that is, you know, thinking about it, um, but is not really sure uh, how to get started? I, I think the first step for anything is like education. So like, either asking questions, joining spaces like this, uh, listening to podcasts from other existing founders. I think one one of my favorite podcasts was called Overpriced JPEGs. Um, it's on like Apple Podcasts and all the Spotify and everything else. So I think just like learning about the space first, figuring out what the heck NFTs are. And once that kind of makes sense, then you'll have the light bulb moment of like, oh, okay, here's the different aspects of how I can utilize them. I can make it a membership card. I can make it access to events. I can do a tie it to like a digital asset so like we're doing 3d nfts and every person who hasn't has a primo bar is going to get one um that they can actually wear in the digital world um, but i think yeah the first step is just education and the more curious you are as a person or the more curious you are about nfts i think the more successful you'll be in terms of like learning and absorbing information yeah absolutely and i think at the you know just like I mentioned, uh, when you start something, I think it's really important to really dive deep. And, you know, I think reaching out to people as well, uh, you know, having conversations with people that are already in the space, so they can definitely guide you into resources that you might have not thought of. And I think you gave a really great um, tip, you know, of actually joining these communities and their discords and actually engaging and learning the low. Um, so you really have a deep dive and you start to understand a little bit more about how you can actually actually start um, building something on your own. And, you know, I think what would be, you know, when I think about an NFT project, I think about like kind of like a list, but I know it's not that uh, as easy as just saying like, oh, you need these three things. But for you, what was some, what was like top three things that you wish you knew before when you got started? Mm, I think the biggest one is, I mean, this is again, like startup advice, finding people who, who do things that you're not good at or don't like doing. Um, so like, for example, most NFT projects are like art projects. There's also music NFTs, there's, mo there's movie NFTs, there's membership card NFTs, which is just literally like a digital card moving around. But most of them are like, uh, you know, cartoons or 10,000 or 5,000 or 15,000 images that are slightly, you know, changed. Um, and so because of this, it's important to have, I think, one of the founders be the artist, um, 
the artist is the person who kind of drives the life, drives the brand forward, um, helps develop the story. And without them, most of the times there's really no real NFT project. So first of all, make sure you have a, a, an artist who's part of the founding team. Um, and then the second biggest one, which we, luckily we had people on our network or through my, my, found, my co-founders network is having somebody who you trust with the engineering piece. Um, we had to develop a smart contract from scratch. And if I didn't trust, actually, I, I take that back. My co-founder trusted his, our smart con- contract developer because he knew him personally from like college or high school. Um, and so if we didn't have somebody that we trusted, we would basically be putting our trust in some random person who we don't know the real name from halfway around the world. Um, which can be pretty scary if you think about um, the power that they have because they're developing the contract. And to kind of make this make sense to other people, the smart contract is, is kind of like engineering a website or engineering an app. Um, but in for NFTs, this allows uh, me as a creator of 5,555 NFTs to be able to publish them online and collect collect all that money and royalties and set the royalty and where that money is going. So you can imagine how scary and sketchy it would be if I trusted somebody um, who happened to just swap out the wallet address of where the money would go with their own, you know. Um, so that would be probably the two biggest ones is make sure you have a great co-founder who's an artist if you're not the artist. And then second, make sure that you have an uh, engineer. Probably the third one would be like marketing and branding is the biggest one. I mean, we're in a pretty bad bear market right now. So like nothing's not very much is, is moving, or getting traction. But I would say like marketing and branding in, in the long run is going to be pretty important. Um, for the life of most projects. That is great. Liz is uh, has a, raising her hand. Hi, Liz. Oh, hi. Yes, I actually have a question for you. <laughs> and I wanted to add something. Um, when we were discussing about like um, who should be in NFTs or who will be the best person, I just wanted to add that we have to understand that uh, every person who gets involved does it for different reasons. So there are people who are just looking to like make some box and, and just flip NFTs or, and I have nothing against it, right? I'm just saying like, you have to first identify what's the reason why you want to get into NFTs. And, and then as Isha just mentioned, all of the required research, et cetera, right? Um, and my question was about how, how will you, how would you find what's market, what's your audience for the NFT? Because I feel that there are so many good, amazing projects out there with really good artists too that don't have the same engagement or, you know, that that haven't lived yet to the successful point that they're, they should be, if that makes sense to you, like if you understand. So how can you as a founder of an NFT project identify what's going to be your niche and, and how you are going to like uh, do even um, like simulations of how many NFTs you're going to sell like just a little bit more about that strategy useful yeah good point or good question so most NFT projects are like 10,000 just because the first couple that launched were 10,000 in, in each collection so 10,000 slightly different NFTs in the collection I think it's pretty important for like an NFT founder to like genuinely assess their audience, their existing audience. If they have a company, if they have a brand, if they have a personal brand and like look in the mirror and basically say, all right, what do I think is an accurate number or a good number that I could not just sell out, but like actually provide value to these people um, that are going to buy these NFTs. So like, why not do a 100 person NFT or 100 different NFTs or 500 NFTs or 1000 NFTs? If you have a smaller audience and you think you can provide more value to that, thousand people versus 10,000 people and be stressed out all the time. Um, and I would opt that route in terms of like who the audience is specifically, I guess that would depend on the brand or the person. Um, lots of people create NFTs that are extensions of their company brand. So for example, if Suma did one, it would be, I would imagine Latinos, uh, probably in the United States, but global as well. Um, you could probably hone in on a certain age group, the type of person that is, you know, genuinely interested in, self-development, financial literacy, you know, growing wealth. And so you, you start to like shape who this person is or who these types of people are. And then you can kind of align with, well, what would what would they like to see in this project as still like within our brand guidelines or within what we want to do? Um, so kind of working backwards by saying like, all right, here's my audience. Here's what I think I could provide value to. Now let's kind of define who these people are. And and maybe even just, I mean, we asked a ton of questions before we launched Speed It's like, our Twitter account for like the months leading up was just, just us asking questions like, what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of that? Um, you know, even the name, even 
uh, the utility aspect that came around it, like the whole 3D aspect um, and even AR was suggested by somebody else. Um, so I think asking questions is going to be one of your best friends because you're going to get direct feedback and like product managers at big tech companies and even startups, they do this on a daily basis. They're asking their top users and consumers like questions. What do they like about the product? What do they hate about the product? How can they make it better? And so like, there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing the same thing if you're creating an NFT project. That is great and very, very, very useful information that, uh, that you're giving because most of the, the question that we receive at Suma, remember that you can follow us in everywhere, it's uh, arroba at we are Suma, we are on Instagram, we are on and also here in Twitter. But what I wanted to say is like uh, the analogy of, that I see with NFT projects, it reminds me when Web2, when everybody just started to be, you know, becomes into into social media creator or content creator and how that was like the alternative to what it was originally the content itself that was tv the people that has a tv show or people that had like a radio show and then that was so simplified that anybody in their house has the power and the ability to do something about that so when we see the analogy with the business with the startups that you were using as an as an analogy as well and then we see that these NFT projects, is, they are somehow like are the techie version, web free version of what a startup might be. My question for you is, do you actually need to, because, because everything is about like simplifies things, right? And making, making technology uh, the tool that makes you makes easy for anyone to, to dive into this, this sort of things. Do you create a, like a business plan or something like that? I'm trying to, to figure out if for the people that are listening to us that are not like, NFT experts, as much of the people that are listening here, is like, where, where should I start? That, that's what they, probably most of the communities might be asking. And one of the questions is, do you need like what any other business or startups have? Is like a business plan or something along those lines in order to launch an NFT or you don't need that at all? I mean, if you, that's a good question. If you're doing like a huge collection and you plan on growing a community and you know, making money, generating revenue, all that stuff, then I, I would put, put together a business plan. Um, if it's like a, just a small side project that you're going to do 10 NFTs and you're going to give them away just to like experiment or you want to experiment with growing a community, but you're not going to take much money or any money, then, then I would just kind of do it and learn as you go and then expand and build from there. Um, but like anybody can publish an NFT on OpenSea right now. Like you can do it within five minutes, literally take an image, design, upload it to OpenSea, give it a title, put it in a collection and publish it for free. Anybody can do that. Um, so it's not super complex if you're doing a smaller collection. If you're doing like five or 10,000, then it's going to take you hours to do what I just told you right now. And that's why people develop smart contracts, which cost money. Um, and they build out teams because if they're investing money into it, they expect a return. And then you got to worry about taxes and legal and lawyers and all that stuff to make sure that, you know, intellectual property rights, who owns them, um, who owns the brand, what do the, the, the consumers buy or what do the consumers get? So like your collectors. So there's, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's levels to it. There's the board apes, which is like the highest tier and the highest level. And then there's like the average collector who maybe is just like a painter and wants to sell five of their NFTs online um, or five of their pieces online as NFTs. And maybe they don't need a business plan. Maybe they just want to like test it out um, and see what the success is from there so that they don't spend hours and hours and hours doing all this work for maybe no return. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so we actually continue asking questions to Ish and Frank. I see that you have your hand up, so I'll let you go uh, momentarily. But um, we are. I didn't mention this in the beginning, but we are giving away uh, NFT uh, Primo bots. Um, so uh, we will be disclosing a secret word that you need in order to fill out a form, and we will also be tweeting uh, the form link, and I'll pin it here uh, to this um, Twitter Spaces. So you're welcome to enter once we disclose uh, the secret <laughs> NFT uh, word. Um, but yeah, we're really excited, and thank you so much, Ish. You know, in advance for. Um, giving this, uh, you know, NFT out to one of the listeners. I'm pretty sure they're stoked about it. Uh, and we can't wait to find out who is the winner. We'll definitely announce it on all of our socials. Um, but yeah, let me actually pass it on to Frank. I see that you had your hand up. So you're uh, welcome to speak. All right. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, Ish, I don't know if we met at a NFT event in LA. I think it was my friend Walters, but I saw that we followed each other. So uh, nonetheless, 
great to uh, be here and just be in the cultivation of, you know, uh, positive messaging in terms of, you know, people of color. Uh, my question for you is, um, what sort of NFT projects have you currently been impressed by that are on the market? And um, what are some ways that they creatively sort of created their senses of community? So, yeah, thank you. good question. And what's up, Frank? Good to chat uh, over spaces. So, I mean, this is a super obvious one. And it's a huge project, but be because I'm, I'm not at New York, in New York right now at NFT NYC, I'm kind of just like following everything super closely online and trying to gauge... Uh, user sentiment or community sentiment of people via Twitter and social media. So Instagram. So I'm like lurking really hard on every single NFT NYC post every day. I basically go to Twitter and I type in NFT NYC in the search bar in the search. And I just like look at every single piece of content because I want to see like what's going on. What are the brands doing? What are the, what are the NFT collections doing? What are they hosting? Um, what are people saying online? Are they positive? Are they negative? How are the events doing? Um, and like the recent news that just dropped for doodles and for people who don't know what I'm talking about, doodles is a pretty big, probably like top five, maybe yeah, top five collection um, right now in the space. And they've just been doing everything right in terms of like their execution, their team has so much experience. So they kind of have a leg up for sure. But it was just announced today that they're, uh, they signed Pharrell as their, uh, I think it was chief brand officer. Yeah, chief brand officer. Um, and everybody knows who Pharrell is. Uh, obviously, he's a legend. Um, and then they also, they, they raised money kind of like a startup would. Um, via Alexis Sohanian, which is the, he was the founder of Reddit. Um, and so it's interesting to see NFTs as a, as a whole just advance so quickly. Um, and Doodles just like leading the charge in terms of like executing day after day after day after day and giving like, re like real value back to their holders. And that, that's pretty hard to do. It's, it's extremely difficult to give like real value via digital asset to 10,000 people or 20,000 people because they have, they dropped the second collection. Um, and I think they're just doing things right. I, I don't know what the secret sauce is. I think it's just a matter of like execution. They have obviously all the resources in the world because they sold out their NFT collection from the beginning and they've made so much money in royalties. So I guess you could argue like if you had a, all the money in the world, then of course it would be easy to make really cool things happen. Um, but yeah, that's one co collection that I would just watch very closely if you're interested in, you know, what they're or like what what success looks like in the NFT world. I'm going to put it, put a tweet up right now. So y'all can see what I'm talking about. And here's what they look like. They're super colorful. They look dope. Um, and yeah, they're just doing really cool things. So hopefully that answers your question, Frank. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Frank, for um, asking your question. I see two people um, have requested. So I'm going to uh, let Sheila come up uh, to ask a question or, um, you know, anything else. Hi, Sheila. Can you, are you able to speak or ask your question? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay, we can hear perfect. you. Perfect. Um, this has been so helpful. Um, thank you guys for sharing so much. I have two questions. One is when you're evaluating um, good projects, what's the best way to understand like if they're real? There's so much noise in the NFT market. Like some of the things I look at are like the community size, what social media presence they have and kind of what their roadmap is. Are there other factors that, that should be considered um, as you're exploring? And then the second question is just in how to set up a wallet. Um, yeah, thank you. Ooh, actually, before you answer, uh, Ish, uh, Sheila, we actually made a Twitter spaces uh, with Liz, who is also right here as speaker on how to open your wallet uh, for Coinbase. So I'll definitely uh, pin uh, while Ish is answering your first question. I'll pin it here to this Twitter spaces on how you can actually open our, your wallet so you can, you know, get into the Web3 world. Thank you. Cool. And then uh, great question. So to answer your first question on like, what do I look like or how do you assess projects as a collector? Um, I think you, you kind of, you have half of it there. So my, my formula as a collector, and by the way, I was a collector way before, I mean, NFT world, it was like eight months. So eight months is like probably the equivalent of like five years in NFT land, just because everything's so new uh, and moves so fast. But my, my uh, formula or like my assessment was uh, team, uh, traction, and I guess like product slash brand. So the team, are they verifiable? Can I find them online? Are they real people? Um, obviously there's a bunch of collections that have done well, Board Apes being one of them, um, with the founders being kind of pseudonymous or yeah, pseudonymous, uh, meaning that we, 
didn't really know who they were, what their real names were, where they were located. Um, and the reason why I would normally like to buy collections, buy into collections that have, you know, it's called docs, basically like known founders, or you can find out who they are is because it provides a level of responsibility um, that other projects that are led by founders who are hiding behind a fake Twitter account could potentially just kind of like leave that Twitter account and never come back. Um, the other, the other uh, qualification, so that's team traction. Um, and th that can mean a lot of different things. You're kind of assessing like open C volume. So to see like, are people buying these? What kind of collectors are they? Are they holding? Um, what are they, what are people saying about this project online? Do they like it? Do they not like it? Um, what, what are the partnerships or things that the collection is doing? That's interesting. And again, right now is a kind of interesting time because we're in like a really bad bear market. So most collections are quiet right now. Some, I think a lot of collections are, are honestly going to die out because people are just going to get exhausted from trying to, you know, push a, a boulder uphill. Um, but just doing research to see like, okay, well, what, what are, what collections are like building cool stuff still? Or, you know, which ones are still active? Which ones are interesting to me? Which ones have a team that's available that I can go and look at their LinkedIn or their Twitter or their personal website to see that they're an actual person and not just going to leave with my money? Um, and then the last is product. So do I genuinely like how this looks? Are they building cool things? Like kind of like, do they have a product roadmap, which isn't always like a factor of success, but it could give you excitement and something to look forward to um, because, you know, it, it tells you that the, the team is building something and they're not just kind of like launching an image and then they're, they're kind of like leaving the face of the earth. So that's my formula. And it, it kind of changes depending on like the NFT, you know, if I'm buying something cause I want to flip it the next day or I'm buying something cause I just want to hold it forever. So like the green goblin that I have is my, my photo. I'm, I don't plan on selling that one. You know, if, if it gets, becomes as valuable as a board ape, then maybe, but I don't, I don't really, it's kind of become my online persona. And so that's not one that I bought to flip. Um, so yeah, that's a uh, kind of my overall strategy. Hopefully that was, uh, hopefully it made sense. Very helpful. Thank you. Of course. What up Liz? Oh my God. I asked so many questions. Um, I'm going to, ask you a controversial question i guess um it's more related with you know how ideally blockchain nfts and uh, the whole ethos of it is more inclusivity and inclusion and diversity and i i sometimes myself a little bit conflicted about some collections that become just like so expensive right and i'm not saying that they are not that valuable i'm just saying like how do you envision in the future for having in the space like more inclusion and also because i know where you are coming from and, and i had uh i am coming from the same origins and and i feel related um so just thinking about that because you know like if we think about people who are uh, in other places uh, even at 0.05 if it's a lot of money for them to put out there so just thinking like how do you envision that so I think, you know, if we kind of like zoom out, the reason why we don't have so many people from, you know, similar backgrounds as ourselves, I think is because it's a lack of education. Um, so first off, before even, before having people buy with 0 0.05 or very low amounts, they need to understand like what the heck an NFT is, what blockchain is and what crypto is. Um, and so the first step in my opinion is like, how do we solve this problem? Well, we find more educators that look like us, talk like us, come from similar backgrounds, or we ourselves on this call like, you know, take the responsibility upon ourselves to create one piece of content a day, one piece of content a week, jump on one podcast, do one Twitter space here and there. Because then it's like, you know, new people that are listening and they're like, whoa, you know, I kind of relate to Liz. Like, you know, she she, she kind of like grew up like I did and like she's in crypto and NFTs. Like that's dope versus like this other, you know, like, no offense to anybody, this other, you know, white dude that's in New York that um, bought a 50 board apes uh, and comes from a very wealthy background, went to Harvard and all that stuff. Like I can't really relate to that person too much. Um, so to answer your question, I think we just got to like do it ourselves, you know, like no, nobody's going to do it for us. Nobody's going to teach us. Uh, I got lucky that I just was around some people that were, you know, talking about this stuff and I found it interesting. And so I put, put it upon myself by like, you know, sharing everything that I've learned, everything that I knew, like you can go back 10 months, eight months to my Twitter account and see like everything that I learned, all the resources that I found. I just like put them on Twitter because, you know, why not? There's people who are following me that didn't know. Um, what the heck NFTs were, crypto or blockchain. And now I get DMs every day. People are like, yo, I would have never been like, or like somebody recently DM me say, I landed a job doing marketing at a blockchain uh, blockchain company. Um, and it's because of you. And another person hit me up. They're like, yo, I started a Web3 company and like 10 months ago, I didn't even know 
you know what web3 meant or what nfts meant so like that's the power of just sharing your learning and building in public because like other people kind of pick up little nuggets here and there and then you know they pass it on and it just keeps going yes so we love to hear that there's actually this really great uh saying that says a candle doesn't lose any of its light when it you know when it lights another one so definitely you know something that your testament you know that people have reached out to you and told you about you know the success that they've had from things that they've learned um from you and like hopefully other people that are also sharing their um their expertise um i see other people here requesting Uh, to speak or to ask a question and I'll get right into that but I do want to you know um, tell everyone here who has been listening in uh, the secret word so you can actually enter our giveaway and it is nft certified so once I'll tweet out the link uh, shortly so there is uh, an area where you have to input the secret word which is nft certified um, and then I'll get right into um allowing other people to speak. And thank you so much, Sheila, for participating. Um, so let me, you know, quickly add other people that might have uh, questions. One second. Great. I have um, fitness. Uh, you can totally speak now. I have upgraded you. Hey, how you guys doing? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Cool. Yeah. So I wanted to ask... Uh, decent amount of questions but you know i'll keep it to the two because i see everyone else asking too um so my main question is being the founder and president of my own project in a very niche specific project uh fitness related one how i mean i feel like i have a good understanding but at the same time it's how do you kind of develop a strong community in bear in a bear market when you see people kind of um not thinking clearly because a lot of it's a lot of stuff is happening and you know like you were saying earlier a lot of projects are just gonna flush out because they don't have the steam to keep up with the bear market and and yeah just i mean i'm, I'm brand new i just started marketing two weeks ago so i'm new to the space but i still want to um ask that question to get a, a head start amongst everybody else that's a good question i mean there's certain things that you can do that are within your control uh marketing partnerships branding Um, driving, you know, more distribution, you know, working with influencers. You can do all that stuff, which helps top of funnel, obviously. Um, but there's certain things that are not in our control. Um, and that's the market sentiment, global financial markets, um, just general sentiment of how people are feeling with NFTs and crypto in general, the price of ETH, which inherently affects NFTs as it goes up. Sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up. You can't really predict that. Um, so, I mean, you, it sounds like you're in a super niche Uh, space, 8,000 in your collection that you're thinking, I would kind of like roll with the punches and kind of see as you're building the community, as you're gaining interest, um, and as the market either goes up or continues to go down, I would kind of adjust your collection based on how things are looking. You know, like 8,000 is a lot of NFTs, and right now people are not buying and trading very many NFTs, even with the price of ETH being down. Um, so maybe that, you know, cut that in half if it's 4,000. So you feel more confident that you're able to, you know, deliver value, not, not just sell out, but, you know, like not have the pressure of having all these NFTs that are out there still for sale. And then, you know, the price of your, the price of your collection goes down and people stop minting. Then it's added stress that you, you didn't want, you just don't want to worry about. Um, so I guess that's a long winded answer of saying roll with the punches um, and control what you can control or do what you can't control, which is basically top of funnel and marketing. Um, but also like, Right now, a lot of people have time on their hands because they're not doing much else. So like kind of building deeper relationships with those people that are within your community. So if you have a couple of hundred people in your Discord or a hundred people, um, I would honestly just reach out to everybody 1v1 and start doing like Twitter DMs or um, focus groups, mini conversations, like mini calls and just learning like, why are you guys interested in this? What can I make this more enticing for people that are within your network or people similar to you? Um, and then you can kind of craft it. Maybe you learn something that you wouldn't have learned if you didn't, you know, reach out to people individually. Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, yeah. We just opened up a Discord this this week for only this week, and whoever comes in gets a whitelist. So I've been in the Discord talking to everybody, onboarding people properly, and I'm actually kind of surprised of how quickly we grew to almost 200. And I'm just like really blessed and and, and happy about that. And we have an actual and active discord too and i'm just like excited but at the same time not letting it get to me because again you know like you said anything could happen 
And my, my second question is, um, you know, I've done an extreme amount of in-depth research on a lot of the projects that are successful in the beginning and then what they're doing afterwards, you know, you know pre-mint and post-mint analytics and stuff. And every single one of them had that sense of hype and FOMO. And so that's, so, but, you, they, but the way they delivered it afterwards maintained their floor price and everything else. Because you do see a lot of projects that do the hype and FOMO and then their price just dumps completely down to the ground. But then you see some other projects who do hype and FOMO and then have a proper delivery afterwards and their floor price sustains and, you know, slowly increases over time. So my question to you is, is right now, it, what's your view on when you see a project that is having that hype to it and getting that sense of FOMO to people? Like, is that something that stands out to you or is that something that, like, turns you off? Like, like, yeah, what's your point of view on that? I mean, I think there's a classy way to, like, promote something and generate hype. I think it's super cheesy when people just use hype as, like, a marketing mechanism with, with no real basis, like, with no real meaning. Um, and, like, again, this market is pretty immature. Like, it's so young. There's not that much liquidity. There's not that many people. If you, like, zoom out to the crypto market and zoom out to the, like, broader investment market or financial markets, Um so there's only so many people in the space. And when some projects have a very specific type of person that they're they're targeting and that group of people lives and breathes off of just hype and is there to flip, then that's when you find like the quick pump and dumps. You know, they do really well up to mint and then they just dump completely because they weren't in it for to hold and hold the asset or hold the imagery or be part of the community to begin with. You know, communities thrown around a lot right now, that, that word. And it's just that uh, it's honestly becoming like another buzzword, another marketing term. Um, and not, it doesn't really mean much to a lot of projects, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. So then the quick, uh, last one, I promise, <laughs> that I let everybody else speak. So then how important is it, do you think, um, helping onboard Web2 businesses to Web3 utilizing your own platforms? That is a big, big part of my whole roadmap is helping onboard Web2 fitness brands to Web3. Um, so how, what's your point of view on that kind of take? I think that's awesome. I think it's going to take a scrap ton of work. Like, I don't know if you were here earlier, but we hosted an event here in LA and Liz, who's next to me on the panel, was was one of our, our guests, uh, kind of like breakout sessions. And her entire session was like onboarding brand new people who know little to nothing um, into crypto and basically get them, getting them set up with the, with the wallet. Um, so I think it's a ton of work, especially if you're doing it digitally. Like if you're doing blog posts, that's awesome. But like some of the information gets lost in transition. Like if you're doing videos, that's cool too. But some people don't have like the patience to watch a 11 minute video on like how to set up a MetaMask and not lose your seed phrase. If you're doing it in person, that's awesome too, but it's not scalable. So I would honestly do all of the above and you know see what works best because it is tough. You know, we for those who are in crypto and NFTs, it's not as easy as it should be, and that's probably one of the biggest pain points for the entire ecosystem. Is like the user experience sucks and it's scary, and it's you know the powers in our control. If you lose your keys to your basically like the keys to your wallet, your digital wallet. And that's that wallet's done so forever. Like you can't get you, most of the time you can't get access into it, access back into it. Um, and so, kind of like explaining all that in an easy to follow video event or blog post is pretty tough. But I think it's awesome that you're doing it, and we need more people onboarding uh, the right way so people don't get rugged the first time. Thank you. They, uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you for um, asking questions. I have one more person. I know it's five, um, but uh, clearly, you know, uh, we're all learning so much from you, Ish, and um, we're so thankful for, you know, all uh, the expertise that you're sharing with all of us. So um, I'll let up the next person that requested. Let's see. Great. Hi, um, I'm not quite sure how to say your at I am TNF one. Um, if you want to ask uh, a question, okay, maybe we're having a little bit of um, trouble with um, the user that just asked uh, to speak. We see that you're unmuted, Hello? but I don't think we can hear you. Uh, yes, sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I can't hear you. Uh, suddenly, my audio stopped. So I just want to go. Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. Yes, we can hear you. He might not be able to hear us, um, but we can definitely hear you. So 
All right. So I think he hopped off. He might be able to come back later. Um, yeah. In any, in any case, I think that this is just the, one of the conversations that we're going to have with, with the themes of NFTs, how to start your NFT project. This is one of many. So I, I just want to remind anyone that if you don't do it as of now, you can follow We Are Suma on all the social uh, media platforms. That's still Web2, but it's, it's, it's a medium for us to stay connected. And uh, we have the plan of doing this very often. So anything that can be answered in this opportunity, we can do it in later. Later in another conversation, we will have each and any other experts that can join us and also let us understand this crazy world of NFTs and crypto and Web3 that is so important, especially for us Latinos. And I and I want and, and I wanted uh, to ask each now that we are in the, uh, at this point, like. Can can you and somehow summarize or kind of like give an overview of why Latinos should be part of this space? Why we need more NFT projects led by people like us? Yeah, great question to close this out. Um, to be like super blunt and keep it real because we need more Latinos in the space, not only to like launch projects, but just be collectors, to be educators, to be community builders. Because I don't want to see us to be like the last in line like we are with everything else, you know. We're, we're not the first when it comes to like investing. We're, we're normally like last for technology globally. Um, and so like this is still relevant, like relevantly new. Um, it's a new technology. There's not that many people that are like super understanding of it. And I think it's, there's an opportunity for just Latinos around the world to, to like be able to leverage this in many different ways. Not only to like make money, but like this technology has the power to to build like and transform the way we we interact in our daily lives and i'm just going to rattle off a couple of things so that it can make more sense to, to you all so, like the deed to your house that can be an nft the uh contracts that we interact with lawyers that can be an nft the event ticket to your favorite concert or coachella that can be an nft the key to your car can be an nft like the, the nft i think has a, a, a bad association to jpeg and we need to start like viewing NFT as just like a technology. Um, NFT can be music. NFT can be uh, the way that we share and sell mu movies. Um, there can be so many different things. Memberships, membership cards, like I, like I said earlier. Like I was talking to a friend who wants to open up his own gym. And I was thinking of, you know, helping him, helping him open it up here in LA. And I was like, dude, wouldn't it be so dope if we just did like lifetime passes as as NFTs, and we just do like 25 of those, they'll be more expensive, but the person would never have to worry about renewing. They could resell it whenever they moved out of LA or what they wanted to give to somebody. So like once you start realizing that there's different applications for NFTs and they're not just JPEGs, then you're like, holy crap. Like I, I should at least be aware of what's going on so that I don't get left behind. Yeah, I think that's an excellent way of uh, wrapping up this conversation. I don't know... Uh, if uh, Miriam or anyone else uh, can has any final comments in order to close out this conversation? Well, obviously, a round of applause for Ish <laughs> for, you know, answering all of our questions and, you know, really being real with us, which is what we want, you know, um, in order to really dive into the space and understand what's happening. I think we're all super thankful for the information that you've shared with us. So, Ish, thank you so much. Um, you know, like uh, Gabriel mentioned, we will continue to uh, create conversations around these topics because we know that it's not just the conversation that can't be you know understood in one hour so definitely make sure to follow ish you know um of course he's always dropping gems of wisdom um so follow ish follow primo bots follow uh you know we are suma so you can stay you know on top of the conversations that we're having as we you know go into the space together and hopefully we um carry other others with us as well um also we had we had Liz in this opportunity and it was like <laughs> having a, a double a double set of double headliners basically it's like very very grateful with you Liz with all the information oh, no, I'm, I'm more than grateful with Suma with you Gabriel with Ish I think that this is what we need to do for the community to create these spaces so you know I, I think that what Suma is doing is incredibly valuable in what each has been doing too so i'm just like super grateful with you guys to have me here for a little bit 
Yes, Liz, thank you so much for also, you know, participating. And um, as we I mentioned earlier, and I also pinned it here, if you want to learn how to open your Coinbase wallet, you can always um, click on the audio and we can, we literally guide you and one of our abuelitas on how to do that. So uh, definitely check it out if you need it. And again, thank you everyone so much for joining us. We are really excited and we really look forward to uh, having more conversations to talk about, you know, Web3 and how Latinos and people of color can be part of these stations. So again, thank you so much. Bye, y'all. Have a good, uh, have a good week. Yes, bye, bye everyone. everyone. Peace. Bye-bye.